Since 1986, the Nigerian Naira has been depreciating against major currencies like dollar and pounds. What actually happened? The CBM was established on the 1st of July 1959, at the eve of departure of the colonialists. In January the Naira came into existence and was exchanged at the rate of Naira to Pound in the United Kingdom and Naira to 60 cents in the United States of America. However, as of today, one pound exchanges for 770, while one dollar exchanges for about a 580 at the black market. While it trade 543.4 and 414.93 Naira respectively at the interbanks. The Naira was coined from Word Nigeria by late Chief Obafemi Owolowi when he was the serving as the Federal Commissioner of Finance. Kobo was derived from copper a general term for coins in the olden days because of the material most of the coins were made of. He beautified the 100 Naira notes. In September 1986, the Sfem was introduced as part of a package of IMF reforms that General Ibrahim Babongida IBB was forced to accept given the mess that Nigeria had managed to find itself. By the time IBB left office in 1993, the Naira was exchanging for 17 Naira to $1. It was during this time that Bureau de Change were introduced into the economy. The rate at which the Naira depreciated in those few years probably explains why Nigerians have never gotten over the idea of a strong currency as the mark of a strong economy. Jan. Abaka regime before he died on June the official exchange rate of the Naira to the dollar never changed from Naira to The autonomous foreign exchange market FEM was introduced in as a way for the Central Bank of Nigeria CBN to sell forex to end users at market rates this rigid exchange rate gave birth to a phenomenon that is now a permanent fixture today the mainstreaming of the forex black market one point the naira was trading as high as 88 naira to one dollar while the official rate remained at 20 to 22 naira Bankers introduced what is called blended rate. Say a client requested $10 million from their bank. The bank would inflate it to say $100 million and then take the request to a firm knowing that CBN would never approve all. Whatever was obtained from CBN was then blended with the rest obtained from the black market. The interbank foreign exchange market IFM was introduced under Joseph Sanusi, 1999 to 2004. Within a year, the Naira was trading at Naira but this time, the gap with the black market had closed considerably at Naira to the particularly if compared to what happened under President Abaka. Again, the attempt to control the exchange rate gave rise to all sorts of funny games. 
since the rate at which banks could sell their forex was fixed. They simply complied with this rate at the IFM, but then collected an extra payment outside the system to make up the difference with the real rate at which they were actually selling. As oil prices started to rise, Nigeria obtained its $18 billion debt relief from the Paris Club. It was like being in heaven. Chukwuma Saludo was the CBN governor 2000 for 2009. Starting in late 2003, oil prices began to rise steadily from around $30 per barrel till they peaked at $140 per barrel in the middle of 2008. What these happy events allowed Governor Saludo do was to harmonize the for different exchange rates at the time. CBN Interbank, Bureau de Change and Wire Rates. For example, previously, you could only obtain foreign exchange to bring in raw materials. But in the world we now live in, manufacturing has changed to the point where you might need to import some finished products to add to your own process. This was the period when the Nero gained about against the dollar without anyone explicitly trying to strengthen it. In a short while, the different rates converged to within one Nero of each other given that there was no need to go to the black market or bureau de change to get Forex when you could get it officially from your bank. Indeed, they say CB and staff used to harass them as to why they had not come to buy dollars. And then the inevitable happened oil prices started to fall from late to less than by the end of the year. All told, when Saludo took office, the Nero was trading at 127 Nero to $1 and by the time he left in 2009, it was around the 147 Nero mark. But this masks the fact that in 2008, it actually went as low as 115 Nera to $1 at one point. Sanusi Lamido Sanusi was CB in Governor June 2009, February 2014. As soon as oil prices recovered, Central Bank Governor Sanusi Lamido Sanusi SLS restored the interbank and WDAS markets that Saludo had previously banned. But he then faced a somewhat strange problem later on. Oil prices were high but Nigeria was not building up its reserves for reasons that are perhaps now obvious. This meant that he did not have enough dollars to defend the Nera and keep it stable as he wanted. To solve this problem, he removed the one-year restriction on foreign investors who wanted to buy government bonds. Previously, any foreign investor who wanted to buy Nigerian government bonds needed to hold the bonds for one year. The dollars came pouring in. A since you did not need to hold the investment for one year, the money poured in and out rapidly. JP Morgan's requirement to include Nigeria in its index was always that the market was capped liquid. As soon as this was done with the removal of the restriction, there was not much else standing in the way of Nigeria being included in the index. Given that oil prices remained high throughout SLS time in office, some measure of stability was achieved. The Nera was trading at 148 Nera to the dollar when he took office in 2009 and was 160 for Nera by the time he was suspended from office in February 2014. Godwin Emmerfield and where we are today. Current CBN Governor, Godwin Emmerfield has banned the interbank forex market and some items from being eligible for forex. CBN now rations 
forex and decides who gets what. As of two years ago, it costs something like $30 to extract a barrel of crude oil in Nigeria. So when oil was trading, at $110 Nigeria had a margin of around $80 to play with. But when oil drops to $45, that margin turns to as the cost of getting the oil out of the ground still has to be incurred. Compare that of 2020 and note that the current price of WTI crude oil as of April 13, 2022 is 104.25 per barrel. That is, revenues have dropped much more than oil prices have dropped. Nigeria is earning almost nothing these days, and you can imagine how disastrous it will be if oil prices drop further. When things like these happen, one way to defend yourself is by unleashing your reserves. Nigeria did not save anything when the going was good so the country walked into this oil price crash practically naked. The most obvious lesson here is that Nigeria has never quite figured out how to spend oil money. When prices are high, you save as much as you can. When prices fall, you open the tap and increase your spending. The point of this is to keep things going steady and avoid wild shocks in the economy. Another lesson is that the politicization of the exchange rate of the Naira is an unhealthy obsession in Nigeria. It gives politicians an incentive to wage war against reality by doing things that are economically harmful in the name of maintaining a strong currency. Economic nationalism comes into fashion why do we need to import rice when we can grow it here? Yet, the rhetoric only lasts till oil prices go back up and the upper hands can return to their old ways. In conclusion, now let's get to the interesting part. The very act of trying to fiddle with the currency whenever we run into trouble is what really needs to be looked at. The moment oil prices crash, businesses and transactions that were perfectly legal suddenly become unpatriotic. And then a pointless argument about what should be imported and what should not predictably take up valuable media, space. Nigeria wants to have high oil prices and spend without saving. It then wants to keep its exchange rate stable even when revenues have collapsed dramatically. It is not possible to have all these things at the same time. It's time to depoliticize the Naira exchange rate by allowing the market to determine its fair value. Do you know the solution to have a strong currency? Having an economy that is not tied to the price of one product that is bound to have wild price swings is an obvious solution. But wanting a diversified economy and actually having one are two completely different things. And if Nigeria is going to diversify its economy, it has not even started yet. Over the last 20 years or so, Nigeria has slowly but steadily moved towards a market a determined foreign exchange system. This is the right thing to do as it takes the matter out of the upper hands. Given the severity of the current crisis, all those gains are now being undone with all kinds of controls and erratic moves that slowly choke the life out of the economy. If Nigeria won't save when oil prices are high, then allowing the Naira to float and be determined by the market is the only credible option left. Who knows, this might help.